These are all the complexion products I own. There's six of them and not because I love collecting foundations and concealers but because complexion products need to match the color of your skin and be a few shades darker than your skin in the case of a contour shade. So it takes some mixing and matching before you can find the right color. Anyone who's tried to buy makeup in India will know that finding the perfect match for your skin is a fair person's game. The beauty industry either likes to pretend as if dark skin doesn't exist or worse, knows that it exists but wants to send the message that there's no room for dark skin in the beauty world. Because dark simply isn't beautiful. The term colorism was first coined in 1982 by Pulitzer Prize winning feminist author Alice Walker and she defined it as a prejudicial or preferential treatment of same race people based solely on their color. And colorism in India has been around for ages. It is believed that the Aryans came to India from Europe and Central Asia and were naturally fairer than the native people who were largely darker. They went on to rule them and the cycle of white supremacy began. It's not difficult to draw a parallel with the British rule centuries later when yet again the fair-skinned English enslaved the darker-skinned Indians setting Eurocentric beauty ideals for the country. Indian mythology is no exception. In the Ramayana, the Aryan hero Rama is depicted as fair and the Dravidian Ravana is depicted as darker. In the epic Mahabharata, Lord Krishna is a dark hero of non-Aryan native people. Interestingly, Indians prefer depicting the skin tone of Lord Krishna as blue in the place of black. But forget animals, even gods cannot escape this discrimination in our country. You all know Lord Krishna. Krishna means dark. He is described in the Mahabharata as Neelamegha Shyama, which means as dark as the rain-filled cloud. Then why the hell do they show him everywhere to be sky blue in color? <laughs> Like how colorblind do you have to be <laughs> to confuse the color of the cloud to the color of the sky? And apparently, <laughs> India never caught over this bias. Look around and you'll see the signs. If you have dark skin, the world is bent on trying to make you at least two shades lighter. And the beauty industry is the biggest offender. There are a lot of international brands that are bringing in um, a lot of colors in terms of foundations and skin tones um, but there are a lot of Indian brands that aren't doing it which is really sad. Tatiana Dias is a junior beauty editor who has worked with magazines like Elle and Femina in the past. If you take a dark skin foundation and you check it out and you realize that it will go like they'll have like super fair and then three skin colors that are very close to each other and then super dark. So someone who's in between doesn't have the option to select just one foundation. They have to kind of mix two different ones. And drugstore brands are the worst offenders. Foundations that are affordable rarely have options for darker skin tones. Maybelline's Fit Me Foundation was a worldwide revolution in this area. They launched 40 shades in the international market. But something changed when they launched in India. The range only had 17 shades. Majority of the audience is built to want lighter skin, so probably that's one of the reasons why Maybelline hasn't uh, launched so many shades in India is because we, they're not going to be able to sell that to a wide audience. But having an inclusive range isn't enough. The message you present to your customers counts too. Estee Lauder learned that lesson the hard way. This foundation in particular has some 50 plus shades which is meant for skin tones varying from super light to really dark skin tones. Uh, but in their campaign, they had four models which was Diana Penty, Shalina Nathani, Diana Rappa and 
church in Alexing who was who was a model. If you saw them, um, they were pretty much from the same skin color family, uh, just varying slightly in, in skin tones. And not just that. When people compared how the models looked in the campaign photos with how they looked in real life, you could tell that their skin tones had been altered. And that's something that sparked the discussion that although we are incorporating various skin tones and we're claiming to be forward in terms of skin colors, are we actually uh, putting that to practice? But this isn't just the beauty industry's problem. The bias is all around us and girls are constantly labeled, reducing them to nothing more than the color of their skin. Kyaare tere gang mein pure ke pure fair like pure fair log hai aur Jerusha ek hi hai jo kali hai kya kya nazar ka tika hai kya group ka kali kali black and white TV blacky kala pani blacky kale mega and crow black and kali and all that was very common. Name calling, I think it starts off from the home front. This is Arpuda Mary Rajan, who has been an assistant professor of psychology for the past three years. When parents themselves start to compare the child with cousins or you know, relatives, name calling starts from there. I was six, I think, and there was uh, this uh, other younger kid who might have been four, and uh, she was the sister of my classmate. And uh, so my classmate said, Didi ko hi bolo. But she wouldn't say hi. And then she kept saying hi, bolo na didi ko. And then the kid was like, nahi, wo bahut kali hai. So I was taken aback because she was only four, you know. So where would a four-year-old get this, get this idea? When I was a kid, uh, there was this boy I liked. I really liked him a lot. And he would, he would call me names. I like this person and this person doesn't like me back because of my skin color. So, I mean, uh, I'm probably not good enough to be liked by anyone. You're white, you're black, you're fair, you're dark. These are not mere words that you use to describe something. Okay, you might describe objects, inanimate things. But if it comes to people, you're objectifying them. You no longer consider them to be human beings. And there's one industry that's particularly good at taking the humanity out of appearances. Advertising. मुझे ऐसा शेर बच्चा चाहिए मुझे गोरी सोन परी ऐसी गोरापन और तंदुरुस्ती पेश है हिमानी सोना चांदी From newborn babies to grown women to even men Nobody is spared from being targeted by brands selling fairness products. They use words like bright, glowing and radiant. But in the end, everything adds up to fairness. We asked Dr. Nirmala Purohit, a dermatologist with over 12 years of experience in her field, if these creams really do what they claim. Nowadays, market is flooded with a lot of uh, fairness creams. Uh, which they claim that that will improve their skin tone two to three uh, shades lighter. But it is not true. Our Indian skin type, actually there are total six type, uh, six skin types from one to six. Indian skin type starts from four, five, six. So we can't change the basic color of your skin. The skin color is determined by genes. When I was in school, I used to go to shops every month to buy uh, soaps that make you fairer, like fair and lovely, fair ever. The name itself, fair and lovely. So when you're fair, then only you are lovely. If you look at the census, 735 million people alone use fair or no whitening, skin treatment, right? Skin whitening treatments, right? So I think cosmetology or you know, these people, it's become a business in India. In my practice of uh, 50 to 60 patients every day, out of that, almost 15 to 20 patients, or almost 50% patients I see, uh, those who come for the skin lightening treatments. These products which contain a lot of um, ammonia, mercury, harmful chemicals, even paraben, they are not at all safe for the skin. Majority of the skin products which are available in the market, parlors and even local uh, retailers they sell, 
they all the screams they have uh, some or like i can't say the exact percentage but few amount of topical steroid will be there and all these steroids are very harmful to the skin advertising convinces the masses to use fairness products that might not even work but there's an even bigger industry at work in india subliminally teaching us what beauty looks like India's film industries have probably done more damage to our perception of skin color than everything else combined. And you don't have to take my word for it. New Indian Express entertainment reporter Gopinath Rajendran agrees. I strongly believe there's a bias when it comes to skin color representation in the Indian film industry. This bias manifests itself in uh, different forms such as uh, the characterization of a role, um, the lyrics of a song or either the dialogues. Um, for example, uh, here in Tamil cinema, the female actors are often referred to uh, everything white and they usually compared with uh, a white flower or probably the moon or even milk at times. Mm. From whatever I've seen here in the Tamil film industry, they usually don't normalize dark skin. Um, if they do, it's predominantly for comic relief, where they make fun of uh, the skin tone. And when you think about what's happening now in 2019, what's happening is uh, even for uh, roles such as the ones from rural uh, stories, where the characters are expected to be dark, we are using uh, um, models from Mumbai and everywhere else who are obviously fair skin and we go to an extent of even darkening their skin colors there is double standard in skin color representation when it comes to male actors and female actors here in south heroes can be dark skinned uh, that is actually seen as a plus point here i suppose because most of the male actors from the south are dark skin uh, when compared to uh, the counterparts uh, who are mostly fair skin <laughs> It affects women more than men because men are supposed to be tall, dark and handsome. So there are uh, many dark guys who flaunt saying, you know, I am tall, dark and handsome. A woman cannot say that I am dark and beautiful because the society will laugh at you. As I am in a marriageable age, so as we look into the profiles of different boys in the bureaus, there are some uh, profiles that I have seen that first preference looking for a fair slim good looking working and so on so the first word over there fair itself you know i feel uh, okay just because i'm not fair there itself i'm disqualified women wage a daily war against the constant scrutiny on their appearances and it's far from easy raising a generation of women who shun these ideals altogether just ask michelle job professional photographer and mother of two daughters the damage that media and society cause by projecting that a woman's worth is all dependent on her appearance is damaging on so many 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 levels like so many levels that we can't even comprehend how it is impacting every small detail of our life i always had this inferiority complex which stopped me from doing a lot of things from you know participating in a lot of competitions or whatever it is programs and i was always the one who used to take the back seat it's okay i cannot do it even if i can i wouldn't be respected out there so i i felt a lot of uh, inferiority complex because of my color when i was younger so i used to always um, i used to not like taking pictures with girls who are a little fairer to me or stand beside them when my second daughter was born she wasn't as fair as my older child so when people started coming home they look at my younger one and then they look at my older one and they will say ah oh, she's nice uh, but she's different from the older one right so they don't tell it on your face but you kind of know what's going on in their mind so that's when i realized oh my gosh is this something that my daughters have to deal with when they grow up there was a point in life when uh, i was completely broken down like it so happened that one day i came back home I was crying when I went to the washroom because I remembered all those people making fun of me about my skin tone. So I thought that you know I should become much fairer, I should look more prettier. 
because appearance has been glorified to such a great extent like there are girls who believe that's everything and if they feel that they are short of the appearance that the scale that the media and society has defined they are obviously going to go into a depression of some sort and they are going to miss focus on all that they are capable of the potential they have the talents they have the capabilities they have they're going to lose out completely on all the amazing things that they are packed with thoughts emotions actions are not like when a child was born it's an empty slate the mind of the child is like an empty slate so everything that the person learns is from the environment and from the people i read a book on parenting and they had mentioned something called the theory of first mention so be it any subject of belief whatever the child hears for the very first time becomes its fundamental belief system that's when i realized before the society messes up with my child's brain and my child's definition of self worth i have a huge responsibility to instill values to instill self esteem and to lay a foundation parents schools colleges or everyone should be sensitive to the way someone looks it's a obvious you know fact that we forget that the way we look is not the person's responsibility it is a genetic combination so i think that acceptance that sensitization of being okay with who you are accepting your flaws is something that should be there everywhere